I'm Dr. Angela McBrady of drflute.com, and today we're talking about how to practice in etude. When you're practicing etudes, they can be a little bit tricky to try to get them to the perfect level that you want them and at the tempo marking that's indicated. Sometimes you have a tempo marking, sometimes you have a metronomic marking, and I am a firm believer in getting them to that metronomic marking, especially your Anderson etudes. So um, what do you do? How do you practice these to get them to the tempo that you want, to be able to play all the way through with confidence and um, with concentration without making mistakes. Because as we all know, it's not practice makes perfect, but it's perfect practice makes perfect. So we need to practice these perfectly. Let me give you a couple step process in order to practice these. And this method I've developed, I wrote it up in Flute Talk a few years back, and I've used it with my students, and it's really been very effective. It's been effective in my life. It's how I attack any real technical passage as well. So let's begin with looking at an etude. This particular etude that I played at the beginning was Anderson's Etude, Opus 21, number two. All right, so it's this etude right here. And this particular etude uh, is very technical. 16th notes all over the place. Anderson always does a certain type of form. He starts at the beginning with his melody, if you want to call it a melody. Then he sort of goes into a development, he changes key, adds all sorts of accidentals. And then at the bottom, he comes back with the melody and maybe gives a little coda at the end that's slightly different. And it's usually in here where it gets really rough, where he adds all these different accidentals and it's starting to get rough. So the first thing that you're going to do is divide your etude into three parts, not three parts, three lines per part. So I'm going to say maybe three or four lines. It depends on, and I'm not even going to worry about where the cadence points are, where there's a break or a rest. I'm just going to say, you know what, I'm going to practice the first four lines here. Then I'm going to do the mark the next four lines and then the next four. And then I have two at the bottom. If you want to take three, 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 you might want to do four at the bottom, however you want to divide it, but divide it into three or four lines. All right. And you want to mark it, take your pencil and mark over here, your three line sections. That's the first step. Okay. The next thing you're going to need is your metronome because now you're going to find a metronomic marking that you can play any of it perfectly. So I'm not going to know that in that really difficult development section where there's all those accidentals, what tempo I should mark. So maybe I'm going to take a line in that more difficult section, not at the very beginning and find a tempo that's slow, really painfully slow, maybe that I can play without making a mistake. If I can do that line without making a mistake, I know that's the tempo I'm going to begin with. And then I'm going to play the first three lines with that metronomic marking, but I'm not just going to play them as written. I'm going to take a whole lot of different articulations and practice. So I'm going to use uh, Tefnel and Gobert's number one he uses them all the way through. Just number one is the first place that he has those 10 different articulations, slur groups of eight, slur groups of four, tongue one, slur three, slur three, tongue one, tongue two, slur two, slur two, tongue two, and so on. It goes through all 10 different articulations. If you don't have that book, get that book and use those articulations. And I'm going to play those three lines with the metronome at that tempo that I know I can play perfectly at with all 10 articulations. Now, when that is done, I'm not going to move on. I'm probably going to move the metronome up a couple clicks and do the same thing again. When I feel good with that, I'm going to move down and do the next three lines with that articulate, uh, with that tempo moved back down 10 articulations, move it up to that second tempo and with all 10 articulations. Then when I feel like I can do that section, 
I'm going to put both of those together and play it at that second tempo or uh, tempo that I, I picked that I could still play it at. And I might play it at the articulation that's written. And if I can do that, I'm ready to move on. I do the next three lines same way. I repeat it for the bottom three lines. And before I'm done for the day, I'm going to start whatever tempo I ended on. I'm going to start at the beginning and play from the beginning all the way through to the end. If I make any mistakes, at, by the time I get down to the end, I'm going to find those spots, take my pencil, and just put an X on those particular measures. The next day, you're going to do the whole thing again, but not at the tempo you left off on. You're going to back up a click or two and start those top three lines with that little bit slower tempo, all 10 articulations. Move down, do the next three lines, all 10 articulations. You can move a little bit faster, do those same lines, do the first group of six lines, move down to the next three until you've gone all the way to the bottom. Before you're done, remember, X any passage that you have trouble with and then play the whole thing at the tempo you're ending on from top to bottom. Never in one day am I going to get to my ending tempo. I'm doing this slowly and I'm going through it carefully. I'm learning everything. One thing I did forget to say that with your X passages, so the ones that you said were, oh, they're a little tricky. I don't have them down yet. The first thing you do when you go to practice is you find those X passages and you just practice those. Get them in your fingers, add the measure before, the measure after, make sure you can play through those tricky little passages and then start that process. I guarantee you that within a week's time, you probably have that etude where you want it to be. And if not, I, actually, I like to you have two weeks to work with a student on an etude because I think they're get, they get halfway to their ending goal in one week, and then they can go the rest of the way. But you've learned a lot in that process. Your fingers have really learned a lot of control. You've learned a lot about concentration, and your fingers have bumped up a new level of technique because of this practice process. So work on it. Use this process in how you practice. Once you start doing it and your fingers get to know it a little bit better. You'll find those cadence points. You'll find your phrases. You'll find dynamics and you'll start playing with all 10 articulations. You'll still do this musically with phrasing and with your cadences in there. It's a great way to practice anything and I approach my solos the same way. So use this process. You'll find that it works. In fact, I tell my students, slow, gets you faster, faster. Have fun working on your etudes. If you like this video, press the like button, comment below, share it with your friends, and please subscribe.